into salvation. So Lord, we give you our grateful thanks. So Lord, may this meal, even as we do it, Lord, we, this is something that we are not accustomed to, but help us to maybe enter a time in history. So Lord, we appreciate how that you have we been such a have. good God who has provided in every way. And this is who you are, the same God today. So Lord, we give you, we want to give you our worship, our praise, even as we enter into Easter week. Lord, may this not just be another Easter that goes by, but Lord, may we find deeper ways to appreciate you for who you are and what you have done. So Lord, as a company of people, we want to uh, give you our praise and thanksgiving. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Barokim Habayim, welcome everyone to our Sedeh meal. Sedeh meal, it means it is an ordered meal that um, the Jewish people have for generations, for thousands of years, um, for Passover meal. And uh, Jesus, on the night before he was betrayed, he, before he went to the cross, he participated and hosted one such meal with his disciples. And today we join the company of disciples all these disciples, 170 of us, plus 100, more than 170 of us, to enjoy and to reenact the meal that they had so that we can gain a deeper understanding of what Jesus went through that night. But let's, let's begin with worship. All right, let's begin with, with worship. So uh, we're going to sing a song. So um, let's, let's, I'm going to read line by line, all right, so they'll be able to follow. The first line, Gadol Elohai. Gadol Elohai. Shiru ki Gadol Elohai. Shiru ki Gadol Elohai. Kol echad ire. Kol echad ire. Ki Gadol Elohai. Ki Gadol Elohai. Here's the bridge. Shem me'al kol shem. Shem me'al kol shem. Otcha ra'oi lehalel. Libi yashe ki gado elohai. Libi yashe ki gado elohai. Right. So the song is very familiar to you and to all of us actually. Just that the lyrics may not be as um, as familiar. All right. So the music team are going to sing one time and then you can follow after us. Just just the chorus first. Gado. Eloha, Shiruki Gado, Eloha, Koeha Dire, Gado, Eloha, Gado, Eloha.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Now we will begin um, the Sedemu. And it always begins with lighting the Yom Tov candle or lighting the holiday uh, candles. So um, can I invite a lady on each table to light the candle? Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Ashe kidishanu vemitzvota vatsevanu le hadlik ne shel yom tov. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us that we kindle the holiday lights. Amen. So, raise up a glass or your cup. <laughs> Alright, the first cup. This cup is the cup of sanctification all right baruch ata donai eloheinu melech olam ore peri hagafen blessed be the lord our god king of the universe who created the fruit of the vine amen for a second cup Okay? That's good. Right. We thank you, God, for giving us the gift of festivals, for joy and holidays, for happiness. Among them, this day of Passover, the festival of our liberation, a day of sacred assembly, recalling the exodus from Egypt. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehechayanu v'kidyamanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, sustained us, and, and it enabled us to reach this season. So now we come to the first hand washing ritual. Uh, the table leader will help you to do that. <laughs> help you to do that. Can we, can we, can we? Okay, okay. Okay, done. <laughs> wash hands took a while, took a while there. All right, the reason why we washed our hands is to eat the karpas. The karpas is the parsley. Um, so, what we do is that take the parsley and dip it in the salt water. I think it's the orange bowl. All right. Take each one, take one piece of the parsley and uh, dip it in the bowl of salt. The salt water represents the tears that we shed while we worked as slaves in Egypt. Ah, uh, don't eat first, huh? <laughs> Oh, don't eat first, don't eat first, ah, don't eat first. Ah, deep first, deep first. Ah, all right, deep ready? Okay, all right. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam bore peri ha adama. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the earth. Amen. Okay, all right. Now, according to tradition, I should have three pieces of unleavened bread. After all, this is the feast of the unleavened bread. The reason why we eat unleavened bread is because 
uh, we didn't have time, right, to um, prepare the yeast. And so we, we couldn't wait for the dough to rise. We need to, ex we need to do the, have the exodus immediately. And so uh, we didn't put yeast uh, leaven into the bread. So it is the feast of the unleavened bread. Now, tradition has it that the host has three pieces of bread. Three pieces of bread. Now, the first piece, according to some, represents Abraham. The middle piece represents Isaac. And the third piece represents Jacob. All right, these are the patriarch, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, I am to take the middle matzah, or the middle unleavened bread. Okay. And because of COVID, Yeah, I asked them to buy the eat durian one. <laughs> not yet, uncle, not yet. <laughs> me first, me first. Okay, and then, because Isaac was the one who was sacrificed out of the three, and so the idea is that Isaac is broken, like that, all right? Okay, so we have uh, choose the bigger bread, the smaller one, put back inside to be with the other two, very mysterious, in it to its middle position. And the one that is broken is put into a separate linen bag or whatever bag, I put it, I, I'll choose transparent because you all can see, all right, so that's what you can see. All right, put it in here. This is now called the afikomen, which means something for you to find. So it'll be hidden and be buried somewhere for the children to steal, the child to successfully captures it by the end of the meal gets to win a prize. That's the story. But obviously, actually, we know what it actually really means. Yes, it is true that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the middle one, the second of the three, was the one who was sacrificed. Uh, but he wasn't really sacrificed because on that hill where Abraham was to sacrifice his son, God stopped him and said that it is on this hill that the Lord will provide. What will the Lord provide? The Lord will provide the second person of the three. <laughs> and half is, and this is in two halves. One to be, one part of him to be buried. And so that ends that story. So now, can okay, we have Dylan? Can I have the screen? Yep, the, the uh, PowerPoint. And ah, stand here, stand here and read the first line. And then everyone will read together. Dylan. Why is this night different from all other nights? Everyone together. We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, and God brought us out with a strong hand and an outstretched thumb. And if God has not brought our ancestors out of Egypt, we and our children and our children's children will still be subjugated to Pharaoh in Egypt. Even if we were old and wise and learned in Torah, we would still be commanded to tell the story of the Exodus. And the more... The more... All right. Um, Thank you very much. And now we have uh, someone, uh, we have uh, volunteers to help us to read, uh, to tell us some story of the Exodus. PowerPoint.
the, the PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint screen. The other screen. Did I, did I share it? Maybe I didn't share it. I'm so sorry. Okay, thank you. Abraham was a wandering Aramean. He and a few people set off on the long trip through the desert to the land of Egypt and lived there. The Israelites became a great nation, powerful, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated them and made the Israelites suffer harsh labor. The Israelites then cried out to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. And the Lord heard their voice and saw their misery, toil and oppression. Birth and call of Moses. Moses, born to a Hebrew family, was chosen by God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. After encountering God in the burning bush, Moses returned to Egypt to confront Pharaoh and demand the Israelites' release. God sent a, mis a series of ten plagues to convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. The ten plagues were turning the Nile into blood. Millions of frogs jumped out of the river and jumped to people's houses and crept under their beds. Nets were on the people and animals everywhere. Then swarms of flies came into the palace and the house of the Egyptians. The livestock of the Egyptians died of disease. Boys broke out on the Egyptians. Hail, the worst hailstorm Egypt had ever had. Lightning filled the skies and large hailstones came pouring down. Locusts flew through Egypt, gobbling all the vegetables, trees, and even the green grass. Total darkness came over the land of Egypt for three days, but there was light where the Hebrew slaves lived. The death of the firstborn child of the Egyptians, the death of the firstborn child of the Egyptians. Now we come to the institution of the Passover. God instructed the Israelites to sacrifice the lamb and to smear its blood on the doorposts. The blood on the doorpost would serve as a sign for the angel of death to pass over the Israelites' home, sparing their firstborn son. God's people got dressed ready to leave Egypt. They sat down to eat the lamb with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This meal is called the Passover meal, for God would pass over them. The Passover night. On the night of the Passover, the angel of death passed over Egypt, and the firstborn of every household, not marked with the lamb's blood, was struck dead, including Pharaoh's own son. This event prompted Pharaoh to finally release the Israelites. Exodus from Egypt. The Israelites, following God's guidance, left Egypt in haste. God parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to cross safely. When Pharaoh's army pursued the Israelites, the water closed, destroying and drowning the Egyptian forces. The institution of the Passover celebration. Moses explained that the Passover meal was to be celebrated every year and when children asked what it meant they were to explain its meaning and tell how god has spared those homes covered by the blood of the lamb and set his people free from slavery in egypt
So that is the, the story of the Passover. And in response to this retelling of the story of the Passover, let us consider the, how much grace and favor and blessing God has poured out upon us. If God would have taken us out of Egypt and not executed judgment upon them, it would have been enough for us. And the word for enough for us is dayenu. It would have been enough for us, dayenu. So every time I finish saying a statement, I would like you all to say dayenu together. All right? I'll repeat that. If God would have taken us out of Egypt and not executed judgment upon them, it would have been enough for us. If God would have executed judgment upon them, but not upon their idols, it would have been enough for us. If God would have um, executed judgment upon their idols and not killed their firstborn, it would have been enough for us. If God would have killed their firstborn and not given us their wealth, it would have been enough for us. If God would have given us their wealth and not split the sea for us, it would have been enough for us. And if God would have split the sea for us and not let us through it on dry land, it would have been enough for us. If God had, would have led us through it on dry land and not drowned our oppressors in it, it would have been enough for us. If God would have drowned our oppressors in it and not provided for our needs in the desert for 40 years, it would have been enough for us. If God would have provided our needs in the desert for 40 years and not fed us with manna, it would have been enough for us. If God would have fed us with manna and not given us the Shabbat, it would have been enough for us. If God would have given us the Shabbat and not brought us before Mount Sinai, it would have been enough for us. If God would have brought us before Mount Sinai and not given us the Torah, it would have been enough for us. If God would have given us the Torah and not have brought us into the land of Israel, it would have been enough for us. If God would have brought us into the land of Israel and not built for us the holy temple, it would have been enough for us. We celebrate the multifarious and grace upon grace that the Lord has given to us by singing this song. This song is called Dayenu. <laughs> it would have been enough for us. Uh, it's taken from the first sentence. If God would have taken us out of Egypt and not executed judgment upon us, it would have been enough for us. All right? Or Ilu Hotsianu Mitzraim Mimitzraim Dayenu. All right? Uh, so I would lead one line and then you can follow after that, and the song will get progressively faster. All right? Ilu hot si hot si yanu Hot si yanu mi mitzraim Yanu mi mitzraim Hot si yanu mi mitzraim da yenu Hot si yanu mi mitzraim da yenu Let's try that again, okay? Ilu hot si hot si yanu Yanu mi mitzraim, Hatsi Yanu mi mitzraim, Hatsi Yanu mi mitzraim, Da Yen. Hatsi Yanu mi mitzraim, Da Yen. Okay, here's the chorus. Da Da Yenu. Da Da Yenu. Da Da Yenu. Da Da Yenu. Da Da Let's pick up some place. Some, okay? Pick up some place. 
Primary food items. There are a lot more, but there are three primary food items that must be explained. The first one is the Pesach itself, the Passover sacrifice itself, uh, represented uh, by the shank bone um, to remind us that God passed over the Israelites' houses when the tenth plague was visited upon the Egyptians. Now, why shank bone and not like lamb proper? Right? It's because um, the lamb must be sacrificed in the temple in Jerusalem and the Passover lamb can only be eaten in Jerusalem and nowhere else. And so every year, they will, Passover, they will go back to Jerusalem from wherever to celebrate the Passover and the Passover lamb is sacrificed in the temple. But in the year AD 70, the temple was destroyed by the Romans and the, most of the people were exiled out of the land yet another time. And so since that time, uh, the Passover lamb could no longer be offered as sacrifice because um, the temple is no more. And so to um, signify the Passover lamb, the lamb uh, uh, shangbun is used instead. And we agree because there's no more need to <laughs> sacrifice any lamb on any temple in any place because the lamb has been sacrificed. No blood, no altar now. The sacrifice is over. No flame, no smoke ascends on high. The lamb is slain no more. But richer blood has flown from nobler veins to purge the soul from guilt and cleanse from the raidest stain. And the second item is the matzah, the matzah is the unleavened bread, which represents the hurriedness, uh, the hurried exodus from Egypt. And we also know that the leaven here would signify sin, that we are to partake of this Passover meal in a way that is sanctified. And the third item is the maro. The maro is the bitter herbs. Uh, bitter herbs, to represent bitter herbs in Malaysia, I think that the bitter god is the best. Uh, representation of uh, the moment you see the bitter God, you know that this is bitter, right? Uh, some of the suggestions that people say, you know, makes the, 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 the Malaysian don't, doesn't understand that that to be bitter, right? So, bitter God. The bitter herbs remind us of the pain and suffering the Israelites went through as slaves to the Egyptians. Right. So, now we are going to begin to um, feast on the elements of the Passover, and we begin that with drinking the second cup, which is, don't drink first, don't drink first, which, <laughs> which is the cup of deliverance taken from, the, from that phrase, I will rescue you. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. And so ahead of eating of the elements on the table, uh, we have our second ritual hand washing. Um, yeah.
Okay. All right. The second uh, hand washing, Rachza. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech HaOlam Ashe Kiddushanu Vemitzvota Vatsavanu Al Natilat Yadayim Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his laws and commanded us to wash our hands. Blessing before the meal, Motzi. Baruch Ata Adonai Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, hamot zilechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who brings bread from the earth. And now, let's give thanks for the matzah. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, ashe kitishanu bermitzvota v'tivanu al achilat matzah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his laws and commanded us to eat the unleavened bread. Follow <laughs> <laughs> ah, a, a, a little piece will do. Uh, everybody will get a piece. Everybody gets a piece. All right. And now for the bitter herbs. <laughs> okay. You got your bitter herbs? Okay. You got bitter herbs? All right, everyone grab a piece. Good, over that side as well. All right. Okay. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam ashe kedeshanu b'mizvota v'tzavanu al achilat maror. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his laws and commanded us to eat bitter herbs. Okay, now, there is some, there is some um, apple um, salad, all right? I chose red apple uh, because in Malaysia, there's some, and some nuts to represent the bricks that we laid in Egypt. Uh, and so you can take a piece of that and you can eat it. And then, you can then now uh, take a piece of the bread and put some of everything, except the bone, huh? put some of everything, including the horseradish, or radish actually, okay? And um, some egg. Egg is a much later uh, uh, addition, not there during Jesus' time. Uh, much later in the tradition, they added egg. And uh, maybe... Put in your bitter herbs, some haroset, and then um, wrap it up. Uh, I'm sorry, no mayonnaise and no Thousand Island. Or... Okay, and we can eat it.
Okay. Now, um, I need the table leaders to go get the proper dinner, <laughs> right? At the back of the in the kitchen. Table leaders are huh? take the appropriate number. Um Caleb, you have to take for me also. <laughs> no, I mean uh JJ have to take for me also, yeah. Okay. So uh dinner is served. I will see you in uh 20, 25 minutes time. Okay, everyone, let's pour yourself a cup. I have made you too small in my eyes. Sometime during the makan, right? Uh, Jesus did something very interesting. In tradition, remember the half matzah that was uh, torn and was hidden uh, is now raised <laughs> okay from it's com from its uh, from where I've placed it and then can I have the group leaders uh, to be on that side of the hall <clears throat> So this is this is called the afikoman or to eat as dessert. So after the meal, they have a dessert, and the dessert is the half the loaf. And Jesus, the Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread and Having given thanks, Baruchat Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Hamodzi Lechem in Haaretz. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Though we are many, we are one loaf in Christ, one body in Christ. Wait up. Yeah. Distribute. Christians visiting us who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior are cordially invited to participate in the Lord's Supper. Other visitors not familiar with the form of service or its significance may wish to refrain from taking the bread and wine. Please do so without feeling embarrassed. Let us, let us remember the Lord.
In the same way, he took a cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. This is the cup of redemption, the third cup. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Amen. And now, um, fill the fourth cup. Now, tradition says that Elijah would show up one of these Passovers. And so as they fill the fourth cup, it is time to welcome Elijah, which I have a separate cup for him. Okay. And uh, Dylan, can you go and check whether Elijah come already or not? <laughs> not yet, huh? Okay. All right. Um, the reason why Elijah is because in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, God says, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. So, actually, the desire for the coming of Elijah is actually a desire for the coming of the Messiah. Right? Because before the Messiah comes, the El Elijah would come first. Uh, and so, when Jesus showed up and transfigured before his disciples, they asked Jesus, like, so you are the Messiah, where, where is Elijah? <laughs> right? And Jesus says, Elijah has indeed already come. And that's basically John the Baptist. So we, we, we want to honor this tradition of waiting for Elijah to come, knowing full well that he has already come and the Messiah has already come. But the Messiah will come again. So maybe in the spirit of that, anticipating the second coming of Christ, we can sing this song called Elijah the Prophet, or Elijah, Eliyahu Hanavi. Uh, the lyrics is Elijah the Prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, Elijah the Giladite. May he come speedily to us in our days along with the Messiah, the son of David. And uh, I'm going to lead line by line. Eliyahu Hanavi Eliyahu Hatishbi Let's try that again. again. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hatishbi. Go ahead. 
Himashiach ben David. Himashiach ben David. Himashiach ben David. Himashiach ben David. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hadeshbe. And since uh, Elijah hasn't come back yet, so maybe next Passover. <laughs> so uh, Matthew chapter 26 verse 30 says that when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, meaning to say that uh, after the communion, uh, the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper. And clearly we know just now the bread that I took it symbolizes him, the one who is sacrificed, the one whom God will provide and has provided. So by that, Christ re-symbolized what the Passover means. Christ said, I am the Passover. I am the Passover lamb. And I am the bread that is broken for you. And I am, my blood is the cup. The cup is my blood that has been shed for you. And so Jesus, through his death and his resurrection, proclaimed a new exodus. Whereas the exodus in the book of Exodus is liberation, freedom from slavery to Egypt to Pharaoh. Some people, a small group, I mean big group, but compared to the population of the world, it was a small group of people who were oppressed by another small group of people. But if we look at reality is that, look at the world around us. We all need deliverance. We all need redemption. We all need freedom and liberation. Not from Pharaoh and the Egyptians, but from Satan, sin, and death. And Jesus says, I have come to bring you new exodus. And when you come out of the other side, you will be a new people of God, a new creation. And that is what the disciples definitely have understood from what Jesus was doing. If not on that day, then three days later, they knew why Jesus did everything that he did. No wonder Jesus re-symbolized the third cup, which is the cup of redemption. And from then, we have continued to observe this Passover meal, stripped down to just the bread and the cup every week. But this is an unbroken celebration that Christians observe all over the world every week and, where for, and every time that we come together. And this time, this week, three times this week, we will have the Lord's table. And so after that, they sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. They would sing psalms uh, called the Hallel Psalms 113 to 118. But uh, more recently, I guess, in recently means more than a thousand years ago, lah, the song <laughs> uh, that has most associated with the Passover at this juncture is Psalm 136, which is uh, 136 verses 1 to 2. Hodu la donai kitov, ki le olam chazdo. Hodu le lohe ha Elohim, ki le olam chazdo. Hodu la donai ha adonim. Ki le olam chasto. 
Give thanks to the Lord for His good, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, His love endures forever. And so we're gonna sing, all right, uh, this song, which is Hodu La Dona Kitov, Give Thanks to the Lord for He is Good. Do la do na ki to ki le o lam khas to ho do la do na ki to ki le o lam khas to let's try that again ho do la do na ki Listen to the chorus. Chorus, everybody. Stanza one, how do I how do I get off? Oh, 
ALF3307, your car lights are on. The fourth cup is um, the cup of praise. Um, and um, Jesus said, I will not drink, I will not taste the fruit of the vine again until I shall come in my kingdom. Hmm. But since... <laughs> It's already here, let's not waste. Barugata donai Elohe nu meleka olam Pore peri ha gafen Blessed are you, Lord of God, King of the Universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Now, then, uh, the, to toast, right? Uh, in Hebrew, toasting is called lechaim. Everybody, lechaim, clear your throat a little. Lechaim. It means to life. Lechaim. Right. Or since here, Malaysia here. One, two, go. Yam! Sing! In closing, Lashana Habaa Birushalayim Habnuya. Next year, in the built Jerusalem. Or, as Christians, maybe we say, Lashana Habaa Birushalayim Hakadasha. Next year, in the new Jerusalem. Next year, may we dwell in peace. Can I invite our other Waishung to close us in prayer? Brother Stephen and Benny and the team and I think a lot of work has been put so that we can all be here enjoying our meal comfortably and also taking in the significance of it. Huh? Maybe just a round of applause. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, in, in 24 hours time, uh, please come back again <laughs> uh, to upstairs to the main sanctuary because uh, Good Friday is... Uh, on tomorrow and tomorrow is a working day so i think you can uh, please do start your journey a little bit earlier and i think with the rain and all and the jam i think it'll be good uh, we can all arrive in time and we can start uh, punctually at 8 30. okay so shall we close this meeting now with a word of prayer come let's pray uh, gracious god our heavenly father uh, thank you for gathering all of us here this evening as part of the wider church family and also as a community of believers here at PJGH. We thank you for uniting our hearts together and for yet another occasion and opportunity to remember and to celebrate you. So Father, even as we have re enacted, we capture and even reflected on over this Passover meal, uh, that our Lord Jesus Christ had with his disciples uh, on the eve of Good Friday. Uh, may this uh, experience, this sacred experience, 
provide us a fuller understanding and as well as appreciation of your love and your faithfulness for each and every one of us. Indeed, our Lord Jesus Christ has achieved it all for us on the cross at Calvary. Uh, indeed, he's the perfect sacrificial Passover lamb who loved us, who took away the penalty of our sins, who gave us a victory over death, and who has redeemed and reconciled each and every one of us back to God our Heavenly Father. So dear Lord, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you, and we thank you for your gracious and merciful to us and how your righteousness to us never fails. So Lord, we pray now that you will uh, depart us now with your blessing. Uh, prepare our hearts even as we return here tomorrow night uh, for Good Friday. We pray and ask that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us and draw us closer to you as we remember the wonderful work of salvation uh, on the cross through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And in Christ's own precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you. The meeting is over. Yep. Next day in okay. the New Jerusalem. Yes, I'll